what's up church it's crystal here and we're excited because we're getting ready to jump into our mini midweek service with suki bonia talking about god's character if this is your first time here take a minute and send us a text message below or go to the housepalmbay.org to fill out a connect card we're so glad you're here and with that said let's just jump right into it so glad you're here with us today i just wanted to share something that i just recorded from um, a group in the United Kingdom. And it really blessed me and it will go in with what we're saying about today. We're gonna learn about the character of Christ, who Christ is and who he is in us. And I read this and they encouraged us. They said, how often do you actually pray about your creativity? And they give you each day an opportunity to pray and today it said, Lord, fill me with your spirit. Grant me the skill, intelligence, knowledge, and craftsmanship to devise artistic designs with kingdom excellence. Magnificent cre creator and God, let me be a creative vessel for your good works. And this reminds me that we are created by almighty God. Who are we? What is it that we should look like? We are created by God. He deposited in us those special characteristics that make us unique. They are built in. They are ingrained. We have inherited them. If we look at our verse for this season, for these next four weeks, it would be Ephesians 5.1. It says, be imitators of God, copy him, and follow his example as well. Beloved children imitate, as well as beloved children imitate their heavenly father. If we look at Jeremiah 1.5, the Bible tells us in Jeremiah 1.5 that before I formed you in the womb, I knew and approved of you as my chosen instrument. And before you were born, I separated and set you apart, consecrating you, and I appointed you. He appointed us as a chosen vessel for his glory. And that's who we are. In Hebrews 1.3, it says that Jesus being in the brightness of his glory, the express image of his person. The New Living Translation says, the Son, Jesus, radiates God's own glory, expresses the very character of God. In John 4, 1 John 4, 17, it says, as he is, so are we in this world. What does that image look like? What is that imprint, that engravement that has been deposited in us? What does it look like? It happens when we choose to become the child of God. Let's look at those qualities that define us. Another word for qualities is virtue, endowment, trait, and character. It's not about rules that dominate our action. It is letting the God that created us reign through us, and we can then be the expression to this world. Today, more than ever, we need to be that exact expression to this world. The very first of these characteristics of virtue, endowments, traits, is humility. What is humility? Humility is meekness not weakness, meekness, not weakness. Knowing that without God, we are nothing. One of the translations in the, the thesaurus said that it was sheepishness. And I thought that was a very appropriate considering that he's the good shepherd and we are his sheep. That was a very good definition or another synonym for the word humility. It is the opposite of pride. It is all that I am, I owe to you, for without you, I am nothing. My focus is on being more like him every day. 
we look at who Jesus was, how he surrendered, how he submitted to do the will of the Father. And we see that in the word of God. We look at Philippians 2. Let me turn there for you. Philippians 2, 5 through 9 says, it says, fill up, fill me up and complete my joy by living in harmony and being in the same mind and in purpose, having the same love, being in full accord and of me, harmonious mind and intentions. Jesus is telling us in his word to let each of us esteem and look upon the other person, not only for his own interest, but also each other for the interests of the other. And he said, let the same attitude, this is verse five, let the same attitude and purpose and humbled mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. I'm just going to go to verse nine. Therefore, because he stooped so low, God has exalted him and has freely bestowed on him the name that is above every name. So as we surrender and submit to do the will of God and submit ourselves to be more like Jesus, he's the one that's going to exalt us. We don't have to exalt ourselves. Another part is not being woe is me. Oh, I'm a horrible sinner. I'm no good. That's not humility. In 1 Corinthians 5.21, it says, For God made him, Jesus, who knew no sin, to be sin for us, to be our substitute. Why? So that we can be the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, so that we can be in right standing, so that when God looks at us, he sees Jesus. He doesn't see the person that made mistakes. Even if you did this morning, it's irrelevant. He sees the gift of Jesus in us. That means that we put everything that we are, everything in his hands, that we are trusting him. In, in John 15, 4 and 5, it says, Apart, abide in me and I in you, because apart from him, we can do absolutely nothing. What does that characteristic look like in the world today? First of all, we need to be teachable. We need to come as a child and realize I can do nothing without him. To guide me daily, I cannot live this life without him in me. It is trusting God that you don't take things in your own hands when others come against you, that you trust God by surrendering. Let's look at Romans 12, 19. Thank you, Jesus. Romans 12, 19 says, Beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave the way open for God for his wrath, for it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay. That's what he said. He says, don't take it upon yourself. The Message Bible, I like this, says, don't hit back. Discover beauty in everyone. If you've got it in you, get along with everybody. Don't insist about getting even. That's not for you to do. God says, I'll do the judging, I'll take care of it. And when the enemy comes against you, even through someone or some situation and tries to steal, the Bible tells us, when we know who's behind it, Proverbs 631 says, but when he is found, when you know that it's the enemy and not the person, but the spirit behind it, when you know that, he must repay what he has stolen seven times over in this lifetime. Not in the sweet by and by. When we get to heaven, we're gonna, everything is already there. We don't need it. It's here. So when someone, maybe in a contract that you're working with, maybe in a, you know, a business arrangement, and someone has stolen from you, 
Yes, you do whatever you have to do legally, but then you have to release it and trust God because then he says in his word that seven times over he will repay for you in this lifetime. Remember that flesh and blood is not our enemy. We don't fight against flesh and blood, but against the principalities and powers and the wickedness of this lifetime. And it's through the word of God. It is always through the word of God. You have to use your faith, the faith in you, and trust God by surrendering and knowing he is in control. A second characteristic that we're going to look at today is faithfulness. The Merriam-Webster Webster Dictionary gives this phenomenal meaning. Faithfulness, being full of faith. It means also to be steadfast, to stay and do what you know it is to be, and that takes faith. It's a daily walk. It's a daily walk. It's a way of life walking the faith walk. It means, faithfulness means let your yes be yes. Faithful to fulfill his divine plan in our lives. In Matthew 10, let's turn there, Matthew 10, 7 and 8. Hallelujah. <clears throat> it says, and as you go, and as you go, notice that he is expecting us to go. It wasn't if you feel like it or maybe if you want to. He's telling us, Jesus in his word, and as you go. He's expecting us to go. He says, and as you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, drive out demons. Freely, without pay, you have received freely give. That is his commission to us. In his word, that is what he said. It means being steadfast, again, that if I'm going to say I'm going to go there, I'm going to be here, I'm going to serve here, that I show up and I fulfill that. Hallelujah. In 1 Peter 4.10, it says, As each one, as each one of you has received a gift, minister it to one another as good stewards, of the manifold grace of God. Be faithful administrators, stewards of his kingdom here on earth, faithful to serve. And what does that character look like today? We need to be faithful to do what he has asked of us, to heal the sick, to forgive, to give the word in deed and in service, to serve, to do what you said you were willing to do because he's the one that has put that in us. Those ideas that come up, gee, I really would like to serve in the children's ministry. It sounds like it was your idea, but no, he puts that in us. And we have that desire, that ongoing desire that I, I just love the children and I want to do. And when you're home, you're thinking about how to make it even better. That is God's desire. His vision for us dropped into us. And we need to be faithful to serve. We want to hear in Matthew 25, 21, please turn there, Matthew 25, 21. We want to be able to hear, hallelujah, to hear Jesus say to us, well done, you upright, honorable, admirable, and faithful steward. You have been faithful and trustworthy over a little, he said, I will put you in charge over much. Enter into and share the joy, the delight, the blessedness which your master enjoys. So when he puts those desires in you and you say you're going to do them, what a wonderful thing to know we're doing what he's asked of us and to hear, well done, our good and faithful servant. Hallelujah. Our third characteristic is forgiveness. Forgiveness is why we are here today, because he forgave us. God's vision from the very beginning of time was to provide restoration, to join us back to him. His heart of love has always been to give us his best, that love, that forgiveness, 
that says through Jesus, we can be one again. From the beginning, even when Jesus gave us the Lord's prayer, he said, forgive us this day. Give us this day our daily bread. And then he says, forgive those that trespass against us. We want people to forgive us. We have to be willing to forgive them as we forgive others. It's not about feelings. It's not about, well, you don't know what he did to me or you don't know what she did to me. I can't believe she said this or she <coughs> stabbed me in the back. It's not about that. It's about doing what he's asked of us to do. I didn't say it was going to be easy. Don't think that I stand here like I've never experienced that kind of betrayal or hurt that I want to say, ah, never again. No. We have to go through the same process like you do. And I had to purposefully pray and I had to purposefully ask God to help me. And I had to say, yeah, every time you remind me, Satan, I'm going to bless that person. I'm going to pray for that person. Hallelujah. In Mark 11, 25 and 26, Mark 11, 25 and 26, he tells us. Hallelujah. He says, I'll start with 24. For this reason, I'm telling you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that it is granted to you and you will get it. And whenever you stand praying, you have anything against anyone, for, forgive him and let it drop. Leave it. Just let it go. I don't know if they were part of the, the movie Frozen, but I've learned that song a lot. Let it go, let it go, let it go. Okay? Just let it go. Because if not, that's like giving poison to someone else and watching you die. You have to let it go and let that person go. Again, he says, if you have anything against someone, you forgive and you let it go, let it drop. Let's look at Ephesians 4, 30 through verse 5. Ephesians 4. It says, and do not grieve the Holy Spirit of God. Do not offend or vex or sadden him by whom you were sealed as God's own. Let all, he said, let all bitterness and indication, indignation and wrath, let all passion, rage, bad temper. Simply put, let that attitude go. Resentment, anger, animosity, quarreling, brawling, clamor, contention, slander, evil speaking, abusive or blasphemous. He says, be banished from you and become useful and helpful and kind to one another, tender-hearted, compassionate, understanding, loving-hearted, forgiving one another as God in Christ forgave you. And verse 5 says, as we started today, therefore be imitators of God. Copy him, follow his example as well-beloved children imitate their father. How do we do that? What does that look like today in this world? Maybe be the first to say you're sorry, that you were wrong. Even when you don't feel like it, you might have been the one that was wrong. Let the Holy Spirit show you. I've had to do that. I've even had an argument with God. Yeah, when I saw my husband sitting there and I said, um, and I walked to the bathroom and I said, I can't believe it. <laughs> Do you see what he's doing? And it wasn't tongues. And he said, go and ask forgiveness. Your attitude was wrong. <sighs> we don't want to hear that. But you know what? I did. I went to, I said, I'm sorry. Being my husband who he is, he probably doesn't remember. But that's, that's the love of God in him to forgive me and let's keep going. 
Don't live in the grudge of yesterdays. And you'll notice that because every time someone brings up that person or maybe you'll see that person in that aisle, especially if you're going in the right direction in like certain stores, you have to go this way and you see that person, you're in the middle and you can't back up because it says you got to walk this way and you start remembering, you haven't released it. You haven't forgiven them. You're still stuck. Keep that hurt between you and God. And when you can, again, when you can, go to that person and talk it through. Pray and bless them with your words, not curse them. You can ask yourself, do I respond in the spirit or do I react in the flesh? I cannot control how others do what they do, but I can choose how I react today. So those are the three characteristics we looked at today. Characteristics, again, we want to remember to become more like Jesus. We have to pull more on him and become who he is in our life. So again, we looked at humility, meekness, not weakness. We looked at being faithful to do what he's called us to do. And the third one, to walk in that forgiveness. Remember, the same way he forgave us, if I choose not to forgive that person, then what I'm saying is, Jesus, you shed a lot of blood. And those whips that they did to you and all that, I could barely see through the passion of Christ without praying in the spirit. It was so painful. But by saying that I refuse to forgive someone, remember, I'm saying you might have shed enough to forgive me but not to forgive that person. Those are the first three characteristics. Join us next week when we're going to go forward and learn a little bit more who Christ is in us and how we can show that to the world. God bless you. Have a wonderful evening. Amen. Thank you so much, Suki, for that word. We can't wait to see you next week again at 6.30 p.m. here again on Wednesday. Church will be back in the building on August 9th and continuing with our online experience. So make sure you save the date for 11 a.m. Thanks for hanging out with us today, church, and we'll see you next week for another mini midweek service. Bye.